the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. So if you just listen to both the Epistle and the Gospel, there are two men who stand in stark contrast. They both, for a long time, were honored in the Jewish nation. They kept all the commandments to the best of their ability. And they both then had an encounter with Jesus. Now, the young man that we heard in the gospel had his encounter with Jesus in a more mild form. And Jesus told him what he needed to do. Sell all your riches, give it to the poor, and follow me. And he was sad because his riches were what he really wanted, what he desired in his life. And we know that it, this just wasn't any young man, but a rich young man by the Greek word that doesn't really translate well into English. And so if you listen to this story in Greek, you knew that this was a rich young man. You didn't have to wait for this fall, uh, the last part of the story about him being sorrowed and having to give up all his riches. You knew it from the very Greek word that introduced this young man. The other man we heard about in the epistle, he was also very learned in the Hebrew uh, scriptures and the way of life. Uh, in another place he says, I was above all of those uh, of my race. And he had an encounter with Jesus. He had a very different kind of encounter with Jesus. He had an encounter with Jesus on the road to, this, to Damascus where he lost his sight because the vision was so overpowerful. And this is, of course, the St. Paul, the one who wrote the epistle that we just read about. And he, what did he do? He gave up everything that he had. He was an honored member of the uh, Pharisees. He had commissions from the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem to go rout out these Christians. And he gave that all up in an instant. Gave it all away to follow Jesus. So there we have the comparing and the contrasting. Two young men doing everything the Jewish nation told them to do. And Jesus comes on the scene and says, you've got to do something more. And the one man said, nah, I'm good to like I am. And that guy says, of course, I'll give up everything. And then notice what he says. That which I have received of first importance <coughs> I deliver to you. Not what I've made up. Not what the scholars have told me, not what my teachers have told me, not what the Sanhedrin says, but what was delivered to me. And we know what was delivered to him because he was with the disciples and he goes into Jerusalem and meets with James and Peter. And what he was delivered was the same faith that we try to deliver to you today in the Orthodox Church. There's only one faith from another one of Paul's epistles. We get that. There's one Lord, one faith, one spirit, one church. And Paul was the eloquent person who was able to write down these things so that we might understand better after all these years. But notice that when Paul wrote this, there wasn't other scriptures. At the time he wrote his letters, there were no gospels written down. The gospels all preached Everybody understood what it was because everybody preached one gospel, whether you learned the faith from Peter or Paul or James or John or the other James or Thaddeus or any of these others, Philip and Bartholomew and our own Thomas, they were all teaching one gospel. Not many gospels. Paul didn't come and teach something new. He passed on what he was delivered to him, and that was the first importance. And so what is it that we have? If we're looking for eternal salvation, we have to keep the commandments, yes. If you're killing someone, you can't get into the kingdom of heaven. If you're committing adultery, you can't get into the kingdom of heaven. If you don't honor your father and your mother, you're not getting into the kingdom of heaven. But that's not all that you have to do. You have to give up all of the things that tie you to this world for the love of God. That's the story of the gospel and epistle today. There's another, one other very important thing. There was a strain of Judaism that thought the more things that you had, the more you were blessed by God. And so that's why at the end of the gospel story, when Christ says it's difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, richer, you know, more difficult than for a camel to go through the eye of the needle for, 
the rich man in the kingdom of heaven, because that turned this whole Jewish idea completely on its head. It turned it upside down. If you believed in that like a good Jewish person, you were wrong, because Jesus came to change the part that kept us tied to this world so that we might live in the next. And that's why, notice what the apostles' reaction was. They were astonished, not just puzzled. They were astonished, because this totally went against everything they knew, which is why this rich young man was so downcast, because he thought that being rich was the way that he honored God, and the way God honored him. And so, when you read through the Old Testament especially, there are those passages that seem like that is true. But then we have things like the book of Job that show you, you know, it's not always true. Not necessarily true. And now we would say, if you have a lot of material blessings on this earth, you'd better use them wisely because it can be to your condemnation. I gave you everything, and you gave me back nothing. That's what God would say to those people. So, whether we're rich or we're poor, God has shown us the way for eternal life. How we can live with Him. Keep the commandments. Follow more especially the Beatitudes. Be a peacemaker. All those things. And take up your cross and follow Him. That's the gospel that Paul and Peter and James and all the rest came because that's the gospel that Jesus Christ told to all of us. The prayers of our Holy Fathers, when Jesus Christ died, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. Amen.